one of the strange phenomenons that we face as a church when we put on events for outsiders, engage events, evangelistic events, whatever they might happen to be, is uh, when you don't charge anything, it's free, uh, people think, well, maybe it's not worth coming to. And so the psychologist would say, well, so you should start charging because that makes people think it's valuable and so on and even if we don't need to charge for it so should we do it and i guess you would are you playing to the psychology or what but when it came to the apostle paul he had this very dilemma he could command speaking fees he was going around as the apostle of the lord jesus he could have charged the churches that he'd set up uh, you know for his ministry amongst them but he was determined to be free and people had the same reaction. They despised it. They thought, actually, if he's not got any costs involved, well, he can't be worth listening to because these other guys have come. They're charging like a wounded ball. They must be as awesome as they claim. It's a very strange, perverse way of thinking. And Paul wants to help us tease out what is truly valuable and it's not associated with how much you've got to pay for it. Uh, let's pray and we'll get into it. Father, thank you for your word. And we pray as the Apostle Paul opens his heart and he's thinking about his own ministry that we might understand about ministry and service, about what is truly valuable. Please protect us from lies who will come, who seem impressive, uh, and help us to be discerning in everything. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're in 1 Corinthians, sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and we're picking up from verse 5 as we continue on. He talked in, we looked yesterday at the start of the chapter about being jealous, jealous with a godly jealousy because he's promised them to Christ, but these other teachers have come in and uh, wooed them, swept them off their face, but it's like the serpent's cunning. They've come deceptively, and he goes on to talk about this and in terms of the fees that have been charged. So verse 5, I do not think I'm in the least inferior to those super apostles. I may indeed be untrained as a speaker, but I do have knowledge. We have made this perfectly clear to you in every way. Was it a sin for me to lower myself in order to elevate you by preaching the gospel of God to you free of charge? I robbed other churches by receiving support from them so as to serve you. And when I was with you and needed something, I was not a burden to anyone, for the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied what I needed. I've kept myself from being a burden to you in any way and will continue to do so. As surely as the truth of Christ is in me, nobody in the regions of Achaia will stop this boasting of mine. Why? Because I do not love you? God knows I do. And I will keep on doing what I'm doing in order to cut the ground from those, from under those who want an opportunity to be considered equal with us in the things they boast about. And so here is this weird tension that uh, Paul does not charge for his ministry. He's gone as a missionary. There are people who've contributed to that. They're paying him for the job. But there are people from either back home in Antioch where he was sent for, the, who set him up on the missionary journey. Or the people who've been funding it since have been people from Macedonia. We've read about the Macedonians. Their general, overwhelming generosity for the poor relief ever. And we've read how poor they were as a people group and as a church, and yet they just can count a privilege to be able to support Paul in this way and to be able to help uh, people in Corinth and other places hear the gospel free of charge by paying for the preacher to go to them. The Corinthians have taken that under the pressure of the false teachers as a insult or that it's not he's not worth it. Right, obviously his gospel is compromised, dubious, hopeless. He's talking about Jesus, the spirit in the gospel, but it's not as good as the Jesus these other guys preach or the spirit these other guys talk about or the gospel that they have. Notice that they call themselves the super apostles, right? They are going around calling them super, you know, there's the apostles, Peter, James, John, Paul even, who came in at the last minute as the, the one unusually chosen. Um, but we're the super apostles. We are better than them in every way. And we can prove it in the eloquence of our speech. He raises that here. They are trained speakers. They've been on the professional circuit. They know how to tell the right joke at the right time. They know how to entertain and hold an audience. And they've got all the, the skills of oratory to be able to wow the crowds. And they charge for uh, to, for people to hear them. 
you want to come and hear our gospel, well, you've got to pay an entry ticket. Uh, it was interesting, I heard a story at the uh, welcoming training up at um, Minto Church the other day, uh, a bunch of churches go, so encouraging, um, about um, how someone had stopped at church by the bridge on, at Kirribilli and uh, didn't know anything about church, saw the crowd, saw the banners and said, how much are the tickets to come into church? And the ministers were confused said, they're, they're free. And they said, well, is there still seating available? Do I have to book a seat? And he said, no, 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 just come in. And so just there's that mindset of curability. Not, this is a show that you pay tickets to go and see. You reserve your seat. And that's what makes it worthwhile. That's what was happening in Corinth. And these super apostles were making large sums of money out of charging people to come and hear them talk about their Jesus, their spirit, their gospel. You might see that in a lot of churches today. It wouldn't necessarily be that you've got to pay the fee to come and see it, although in some cases that, that's true. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the bucket's going around and if you really love the Lord, you really want to see good things happen, you'll put your credit card details in now. Now, I'm all for taking off a tree in churches. I'm all for because churches fund ministry work uh, the lo in the local area. And so it's, it's a complex kind of thing. But we don't want to make non-Christians pay for the gospel, right? The gospel, Jesus came free of charge. He left the riches of heaven to come and become poor. So that in his poverty, we might become rich as we embrace his salvation, get the forgiveness and have the inheritance forever with him. And so real ministry models itself on them as much as possible there there are on costs sometimes and you got to work that out but we're trying to make the gospel as accessible as possible right paul wasn't trying to put a stumbling block in their way by making it free he was trying to make it available to them so that no one has to pay because the gospel is free of charge you don't have to earn your way you can't pay god to enter heaven with anything that you do with your money with your life Right, God wants all of you and he's given you everything for him and for his glory. But the gospel is free of charge. Come into my kingdom, I'll receive you home. Your sins forgiven because of the cross. And so Paul's ministry is cross-centered in every way. And he talks about how not only did he not charge fees, but when things came up that actually did cost money, he could have gone to the converts at that point in Corinth, but actually no, he would speak to the Macedonians to say, can we arrange something to get, you know, whether it's the, the, uh, the PA equipment or the whatever it is, the medical costs covered uh, that might have come up. Uh, and so he was determined, and this is what he boasts about. The other guys boast in how much money they can charge and get away with to come hear them. He's boasting in the fact that it's free and it will always be free uh, as far as he's concerned. He's not interested in... Uh, bleeding them dry for his own purposes, his own glory, his own war chest for his retirement fund or whatever, slush fund or whatever you might happen to call it. And so he's going to keep going in the same directions, even though it's a little bit culturally insensitive to the Corinthians who are valuing things on Facebook. They're judging with the eyes of this world rather than the eyes of, uh, the, of the spiritual waves of God. You might remember back in chapter 5, he was talking that as we come to Christ, we're given a new life to live for him who died for us and rose again. Uh, we're given a new job of being his ambassador. We're also given a new way of looking at the world, right? Are people in Christ or not? That's, that's the category that really matters. Not the rich, poor, fat, thin, ugly, good-looking, funny, not funny. All the categories that people put, in, um, put into... The Corinthian culture was very much of a, this world of impressiveness, of good looks, of fine speaking abilities, and the price tag on the ticket it showed you the quality of it. Well, that's not the case all the time, and certainly not the case with the gospel. The gospel is of infinite value, so valuable you could not pay for it, and God's not expecting us to. And so God wants the ministry free of charge. Now, that ought to, we ought to reflect then on our own personal ministries to others um, and uh, in terms of church running events and so on. How can we make the gospel as available as cheaply as possible, free as possible? How can the Christians pay for this ministry to the non-Christians? That's where we're in the business. That's why with our church offices, we pay people in our context 
um, Dave, me, you know, and occasionally others at different times, uh, Adam last year, um, to do work and we don't charge uh, and we don't charge for uh, christings for people coming from outside. We don't charge for, um, or, you know, for uh, taking our time to go on hospital visits uh, to see a family who's grieving or someone that's dying. We don't charge for those things because we are well supplied by the pay that we get from the Christians uh, who support uh, the work here at St Barnabas. But all of us should be thinking about, well, how can I make the gospel as accessible as possible to the people around me? What is it that we can do? What can I do with my neighbours? What can I do at church? How do we minimise the costs? Um, and, you know, parish council makes uh, decisions from time to time and policies about whether events should cover their costs or not. And, 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 and the policy really depends on is this gospel outreach or is this just fun and you know people pay for their dinners and things like that uh so we tend to cover the costs of the activity whatever it is you know whether it's painting or um, comedy or whatever by by charging for that kind of thing but we don't charge for our time in organizing it the costs would blow right out um but we're trying to make the gospel accessible they're worth reflecting on and god's challenge says but also points to the principle at stake here that just because the gospel comes free of charge doesn't mean it's invalu it's um, valueless. It is the most valuable treasure of all. And he's calling on God's church to make that available. And real ministry is not valued by the dollar sign that the speaker charges. Uh, and that's a great warning to us in a culture that's also driven by bling and appearance not to judge things that way. Father, we pray, please, that you'd help us to be wise and discerning. Uh, we pray that our heart would be for the gospel to go out as best we can. Help us as Christians to pay for it. Uh, and we pray, please, that we'll be able to deliver uh, your message as cheap and as freely as possible, like the Apostle Paul, that we might even boast about it. Even when uh, people's perception and psychology might say otherwise, help us to think your way and follow the Lord Jesus, who gave up all the riches of heaven, free of charge to die for us so that we might become rich in him and have salvation. We pray that your thinking would dominate our minds and our lives and decisions. We pray for our church as we engage in your mission. Help us to uh, work out how to uh, do it this particular way. Thank you for the, the supply of uh, finances through your members. We pray for generosity there. Uh, we pray that for other churches as well and whoever's listening, and for all of us to have generous hearts that wants to pay and contribute and uh, take your gospel forward in whatever way we can, whether it's financing others or going ourselves, uh, speaking to the neighbour. Father, please help us to be mission-minded in everything and not to be thinking, what can we get out of it? We pray for those churches that have been in, influenced and into, infected by false teachers who've come um, impressing in worldly ways we pray that they would see through it all the churches you would protect your people uh, and we pray please for changes of heart for repentance and faith from those who've been sucked in and doing the sucking in as well father um, yeah help us to love you and to follow the lord jesus and the example of the apostle paul as, um, as we try to honor you and seek people to come to know you amen god bless everyone Catch you, God willing, tomorrow for another devotion.